All right, uh, this is Jaron Abdallah, and I'm here in Reedyville, Tennessee, with Miss Mabel Helton. How are you today? Fine. Uh, today is May 22nd, right? Right. Uh, and do I have your permission to record this? Yes, you do. All right. Uh, so how long have you lived in Reedyville or in this area? 88 years. <laughs> 88 years. When's your birthday? October the 25th. I was born in 1923. Okay. Mother said I was born the 24th, but my birth certificate says 25th. Oh, well, I guess we'll go with the birth certificate then. Uh, and where were you born? Braxton, Tennessee. Braxton. It was destroyed by a tornado. It's about three miles up the road. Okay. Uh, when did your family move to Reedyville? Well, 1927. 1927? Well, Reedyville is address up here where I was born. Okay. Uh, I've always lived in Reedyville, like I said. That was Braxton up there, but it's about a mile up the road. It's Reedyville, still Reedyville. Okay. Um, can you remember any stories maybe that you heard from your parents about the area? Nothing no more than I know myself. <laughs> okay, well, please tell me um, what you know about this area. Well, I know that everybody that's lived here in the years past is all about gone. My mother and daddy was lived two miles from where I'm living now. And I was lived, moved there when I was three years old and lived there till I was a sophomore in high school and moved in down in Readable right down here. And I finished high school down there. And I've lived in Michigan, I've lived in Texas, but I've always come back to Reedyville. <laughs> what made you come back to Reedyville? Well, my folks and all my family back here. Uh -huh. uh, do you know much about the history of this area of Reedyville? Well, I know the Reedy says that, and I know all about that. I said my daddy went to the sale when I sold the Reedy property. Oh, well, please tell me about that. I don't know all about that. I was a baby. Okay, but he didn't ever talk about it? Well, yeah, I heard him talk about it, but it was sale. And there's a house right up here that been here for years, and right up on the hill here. Uh -huh. Barkers live there. And who are the Barkers? It was Oscar Barker owned it. And Ray Barker passed away a few days ago. He was living there. His sons don't live there now. Uh, and they were influential in the community? Yep, everybody. But all about, uh, there used to be down here, Readable had a bank, barber shop, blacksmith shop, two stores on this side of town. <laughs> on the other side, they had a store and a garage. They had two stores over there. And when is this? What time period are we talking about? I'm talking <clears throat> about in the 30s. Okay. My mother worked in one of the stores down here. And what store? On uh, Will Jatun run the store. They had, had two Jatun stores down here. And they had the bank down here. Harry Carter run it. And Mamie Reedy helped him in the bank. And old Uncle Bert Cawthon run the blacksmith shop. And that uh, they back during the depression was when the bank went out, hmm. and Harry Carter went to Muffetsburg to the bank down there. Okay. Uh, yeah. What can you? What else can you tell me about the community? About the people who lived here, um, especially about the mill at that time. Well, at the mill, well, oh, man, Sam Hayes run it when I was little, and I'd go with my daddy over there to the mill. My daddy ran a thrasher and he carried wheat and corn and all down there and I'd go with him and old man Hayes he locked me in the ice house aggravating me. <laughs> I swallowed him and I said back then that's where we went and got ice. Okay. Got ice out of the ice house. At that time we didn't have electricity but when I got up I was in the 40s, we moved to, into Readable. And Readable had the first electricity 
anywhere. They had electricity for Muppetsburg. They had a bell code run from the mill over there. Uh huh. And that, uh, so you had electricity from the mill? Mm hmm. And what was that like? Well, it's just like regular electricity. <laughs> but it wasn't all, it wasn't 24 hours around the clock, was it? Yes. It was? Okay. We had lights all the time. Mm hmm. Even at night? They, yeah, all the time. Okay. The, they didn't have it out in the country. They just had it down here in town. Okay. In the town of Reedwell. So what, what is the town? What are the boundaries of the town? Well, this house had electricity and that house up yonder had electricity. And not far out anywhere, so not, not a mile or two out of town, hardly. Okay, so around the post office. Around the post office. Well, and the post office is not where it used to be. Oh, where did it used to be? On the other side of town. <laughs> okay. Um, but when you say the other side of town, what do you? I mean, mean? across the real uh, river or next to the mill. Okay. Uh. It moved over here. This used to, where the post office used to be, it was a store. What store? Well, <laughs> different ones run it. Ms. Burnett run it, and Mr. Raymond Beckton run it, and yeah, different ones run the store. So you said you used to go to the mill with your dad? Yes. Um, what can you tell me about that? What was that like? Well, I rode with a wagon going him with them to the mill, and... Uh, I'll show you a picture of him and his thresher. Yeah. And, uh, we'd go to mill there, and then we went to Brown's Mill, which is at Las Cassis, which is quite a distance over to Las Cassis. Then it, it seemed like going forever, you ride a wagon. And I'd ride in the spring seat with him on the wagon till we'd come back, and I'd be give out, and I'd go get under the seat and go to sleep. <laughs> And about how long was that ride? Well, it takes 15 minutes to go get over there in a car, so you can imagine in a wagon how long uh -huh. it took all day long. Uh -huh. wow. It's about, uh, I'd say, 15 miles over there. Okay. And so what did you go to that mill for? Take grain. Okay. My daddy thrashed all summer. We had so much grain, they had to get... I, we never went hungry in my house. We always had plenty of meat. And my daddy killed his own hogs and cows and whatnot. We always had plenty to eat. Um, what did your mother do? She, well, she was a housewife, and then she worked at store part-time. Okay, and what did she do at the store? Well, she's just a little old clerk. <laughs> this is a little country store. Uh-huh. In which... I think you said what store that was, but I can't remember. It's Will Jaton run the store. Okay. And it's right, well, right inside of where I'm living now. Oh, it was right here? No, right down by. Oh. Which way did you come in? Um, I came from the John Bragg Highway. John Bragg Highway. Mm -hmm. Well, if you come the other way, it's about a half a mile down, maybe a quarter of a mile down there. Okay. They had two stores and a bank and. Uh huh. And at that time. There's all the people that live down there is gone. And over on the other side of going around towards Muffetsburg, where you make a circle here in Readable, Ms. Annie Urey run a boarding house. Had breakfast in bed. She had a big sign set out on the highway. And they had, they had that house burned, oh, I guess in the 70s. Maybe four. She was a sister to Uncle Dave Macon. <laughs> you know who, who the name of Uncle Dave Macon is? I know the name, but I'm not really familiar. Well, so he played on the Grand Ole Opry. Okay. He's buried down here at Coleman Cemetery. Oh. Can you tell me a little bit about him? Was he from this area? Well, I think he was raised in McMinnville, and he used to run a wagon was carrying stuff to Nashville and that's why he got on the Grand Ole Opry down there. You know what the Grand Ole Opry yeah. is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where he played on Grand Ole Opry, him and his son Dars. And uh, what's and his... And this Miss Yuri that run this place was a sister to Dave. Okay. 
and he used to be at our house all the time because my daddy raised my mother, my mother and daddy raised my mother's sister's child, and back then they didn't adopt them, you know, they just mm -hmm. took them as fosters. Mm -hmm. And he had lived with a family, and he passed away in October of 2008, and he was a nephew of Uncle Dave. So you said Uncle Dave Macon would come to your house? All the time. And what, what was he, he like? Can well, you tell me about him? I won't tell you on this sort of thing here about what he said. He, he aggravated me to death. <laughs> and I said, I could, uh, I have to say, well, may well come here. May well come here. He was, uh, he stayed with my daddy for two weeks at one time. And my daddy was sick and he was, told him, said, hey, I'm gonna pray for you. And my, he got on his knee and my daddy told him, get up there, you ain't fit to pray for nobody. <laughs> I said, I don't want you praying over me. But uh, he got, uh, when he'd go off on road trips, when he's traveling with the musicians, he'd come by, see his sister and always come to the house. Whenever he'd come in, and we always had him every time. And uh, at the time, over where the mill is at, there was a store that sat right over the race that run the water runs down by the mill. And old man Rat McFerrin and George Hollingsworth run that. And Rat McFerrin lived in the house beside it. And that house, water gets in it every time it rains. It's a big flood. And it gets in the mill, too. Mm -hmm. I said, this guy's gonna be shot one day. They're gonna run up there about over my head. He won't be going in that mill. I hate to tell him, but it will. Uh -huh. I live right, the river's right there at the back of my house. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, aren't you afraid the river get in your house? I said, if it gets in my house, there won't be nothing in Readable. Because where I lived in Readable, when we'd have big floods, the water would come up to the back door and get to the axle up on the car. Wow. And so if it got a big flood, it would never get up here. It's got a mountain to climb. Yeah. So in the big floods of 2010, the May floods. Yeah, we didn't, it didn't bother me. Okay. Did it flood in Reedyville? In town? No, it, it didn't do that like it did down there. Hmm. But I live here where I, and I can't get across. As far as your eye can see back that way the water was and over here it gets out in this field over here. Hmm. So you were stuck here? I'm stuck here. Uh -huh. I'm stuck here on a little peninsula that's sticking out here. <laughs> hmm. But it don't bother me because and I've got friends say, oh, when it gets up, won't you come to my house? And I said, why did I leave well home for? I don't want to leave home. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me more about growing up here? Well, I went to readable school, and they called it Cull Pepper. I went to school there five years, and then I went to Curly School over in the Curly community off of Highway 64 going towards Bradable. And... That's where I went to church over there, and then I finished school there and went to graduate from Woodbury High School. And I played ball over there at school, basketball, and played ball in high school too. So then I, after I finished high school, went to Michigan and lived a while, and then come back home, stayed a while, and went to Texas. I had a sister lived out there. So I come back home, went to work down here. And I worked at, uh, I was working air utilities, they called it. What did they call it? Air utilities. That's a place out of Muffisburg on the old Highway 70. And I was working there during the war. And the day of the war ended, they told us that what they was making. They was making parts for the atomic bomb. Really? Wow. I worked there as a PBX operator. And what does that mean? <laughs> that's, 
that's a touch switchboard telephone book. And, uh, well, I also greeted everybody that come in. Sure. And then I worked for the Co Colonial Corporation in Woodbury for almost 30 years. And what did you do there? Everything. <laughs> I have sold, and then uh, the last few years I worked uh, making ish and piece goods, yards and yards of piece goods to make shirts. And I had to figure out how much it'd take to make a shirt, and what color buttons to put on it, and what color this that, and they made. Uh, patterns out of then and then whatever they took their patterns they'd make the shirts they made them for J.C. Penny, Sears and you name it just anybody and if anybody tells you that they are wearing a, only one of a kind thing that's not so that's that is not so because whatever button they want to put on a shirt they put it on it if it's J.C. Penny, they won't take the label out to take it out and put something else in it and set it for something else. Interesting. Now, these logos don't mean a thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, you may say I buy a pair of chick or whatever pants you get. It could have been anybody's pants as far as that's concerned. They put all the things on there, it's a different label. Uh -huh. And they make them for everybody. And that was in Woodbury? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you mentioned before I turned the recorder on that you had a friend that you used to run around with. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about that? Well, she and I run around together when I lived down here in Readable. I'd known her for our years and years. That was, she's a niece of Aunt Day Macon's. And what's her name? Martha Ann, she was Martha Ann Wood at the time. And she married a Davis. She's in a rest home at Woodbury. And what would you two do? We went to the shows and we went here and there. We always had somewhere to go. I could drive and she didn't have a car. So, I got, uh, we always had a car. Uh, from the time I was born and on, we had a car. We had an old T model back when I was little and then we got an A model. And just went on up to, the, to a good Ford. According to whatever they had, my daddy got the first car he got. Uh, well, not the first one, I don't guess, but he got them from a pocket. And then his son went had pocket motors in McMinnville and Jennings Motors got cars from Jennings Motors in Woodbury. We also used to go in a buggy. I brought a buggy, buggy. <laughs> Did everyone in the community have a car? Or? No. Okay. They was still a few people had cars. Uh-huh. I guess in this community, there's probably five or six cars at the time. This was all gravel roads. It wasn't none paved. Uh-huh. And where the John Bragg Highway there wasn't no road except going straight across. And after it got, from where I'm living now, after it got so far, it was a bluffy hillside you had to go up. Hmm. So, how could your family, how did your family afford the car? Because of your dad's business, or? <laughs> well, my daddy traded in houses and everything. he buy land and then he'd sell it and move. They did that, moved all the way before I was born, and then after I come along, I reckon I decided to settle down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he run them thrashers. And what's a thrasher? And a thrasher is a tractor with the, like, uh, you, you see them out here in the field where they're running tractors and things with, with the, like hay balers and all. It thrashes the wheat out and gets, puts the grain one way in the corn, and the straw the other direction. Okay, I know what you're talking about now. 
You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. now I'm going to show you the picture in a little bit. Yes. He had a big hand, a bunch of people worked for him. And I said, my mother always fixed dinner for him, most time, a lot of them. And she carried him. He couldn't drive, but she always had to carry him to work every day. So your dad didn't drive. Your mom drove him to work? My mother drove over for him. Okay. Um, did your family get a lot of um, cornmeal or anything from the mill for oh, personal we, use? We had all kinds of bread. Mother was a good cook. Mm -hmm. We had cakes and pies and something all the time as far as that's concerned. And I said, always at Christmas time, our oh, daddy always went out and bought two stalks of bananas <laughs> and everything, you know, and a hoop of cheese and first one thing another. We had a big Christmas, you know. That only come once a year, but you you buy some every once in a while, but that Christmas time, we always invited a lot of people in. We always had family to visit. Uh -huh. One day, some days, the <coughs> one family would come, another day, another, and so. Hmm. My, uh, my mother was a wonderful cook. What were some of your favorite things that she cooked? She can, I, I can cook like just like her. I can cook a minute. I cook a banana pudding. I got a friend said I could eat a whole one anytime you fix it. <laughs> uh, mm. My granddaughter's husband come the other day and I had one and she he said, "Well, I hate to say it, but I can't. I'm gonna eat it. Now I'm gonna take part of it home with me." I said, "We'll take it all because I don't. I, I'm by myself. Mm -hmm. And when you're by yourself, you don't eat." as much as you would if you're sitting down at the table. A lot of times you run in and get your cracker and cheese or something else and... Uh-huh. Uh. Well, if we can go back to maybe growing up in this area, um, where did you say you went to elementary school? Elementary school? Yeah. Culpepper, they called it. Culpepper. Uh. But it's readable address. And now, then they can't change it to readable school. So now and it's now they call it, they got a school up there and they call it West Side. Okay. It's not far apart from where it's at. And what kind of things did you do for fun when you were that age around here? Fun? You didn't think of fun. You had work to do. <laughs> so what was your work that you had to do? Well, have you, have you don't, don't many people milk cows anymore, but I got up at 3.30 in the morning to go milk cows. Mm -hmm. My daddy sold milk. We had a third, uh, uh, he had the, uh, the milk machine that he'd turn the milk out and it separate the whole milk from the other. And I said, now they say 1%. I said, I wouldn't drink that for nothing because we call that Blue John and give it to the hogs. <laughs> We didn't drink that milk. Uh -huh. That is enough more, more than water. Uh -huh. This was a little, got a little milk in it, but it didn't got no milk in it. So you would get up at 3.30 in the morning and milk the cows, mm -hmm. and then... You go to school and you come home and you're tired, but you gotta go to milk the cows. <laughs> so you'd milk them again when you got home? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well at, well, at milking time. Uh-huh. You have a certain time we'd milk every day. And he had a big bunch of cows with milk, and he had sheep, and he had goats, and we had mules, and he had some of the best mules there were anywhere. Did he ever uh, take his mules to Columbia? Mm -mm. No. Back okay. then, there wasn't no such thing as that. Okay. Back then, people didn't travel everywhere, you know. Mm-hmm. So what was school like? What do you remember about school? Well, the first day I went to school, I went on a wagon to school. And in wintertime, it was cold, and Mr. Harm Dennis drove the wagon, and he'd heat the little uh, concrete blocks sit, uh, and heat them up for us to keep our feet warm till we go to school. And of course, I said, then you dress not like you do now because 
you had to get warm, keep warm. You wore underwear. And I said, if I ever get grown, I won't ever own no more underwear. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yes, yeah, so what was your school day like? Well, it's not like it is now because we didn't have all these meetings and everything. We went to school and we studied so long and stayed there so long and you come home. Okay. Uh. <coughs> I, I said they have more teacher meetings now and they go to school. Did you have a lot of friends in the area? I know you said you worked a lot, didn't play a lot, but... Oh, we played. Uh -huh. Oh, we had balls. We playing. I said we play any over and high blindfold and first one thing or another and just kicking the kid. I said we kids had something to do. You always made. I said when I was little we played hopscotch and first one thing. But then you had you didn't have nowhere to go. You couldn't go nowhere. Uh -huh. Kids didn't have cars <coughs> to drive to go nowhere. So after you went to Culpeper School, you went to Curly. Curly. And what grades was that? Six, seventh, and eighth. Okay. And so did you still, was your day similar where you would get up and milk the cows and when you were in middle school? Well, I helped milk off on until I was grown. Uh huh. Um. So you know, everybody has to have a job. Nowadays, they don't do that. They don't teach kids to work no more. They don't know how to do them to sit and watch TV. <laughs> so what do you remember about growing up around here in your middle school years? Well, the only thing I remember about is just going to school and going to visit people. And Who would you visit? Mostly my, well, my, we always had friends and everything, just didn't have no certain place to go. Uh -huh. I got a little girl, friend, woman, girl that lives down here. Barry Ann, you know who Barry Ann is? Mm -mm. That's, uh, I don't know what's her name. <laughs> oh, Jane's uh, friend. Okay. Her first cousin used to live right across the field from me. Well, she'd go to school and she stopped up, bus stopped at my house. So she'd get, get home and she laughs because she said, you've walked a million miles from me. She couldn't go home unless somebody walk her home. So we'd walk her home every day. And, but when she was little, I'd go over and help stay with her mama and let her mom, mama wash out at the wash house. She had another log house that washed in. And she was a baby, so she didn't leave her in the house. And I'd go take care of Bed Jane. Hmm. And then when I was in high school, I my parents moved and left our house up here in Readable and rented out part of it. And went and stayed with my granddaddy down in it. Dilton, close to Muffetsburg, and I stayed with some friends of mine, and that's when the maneuvers came in here. And who? <laughs> Army. We was invaded by the army. They had maneuvers. Oh. Can you tell me about that? Well, they come in here in the middle of the night, and there's tanks and everything else, and you could imagine what you sleep and what it sounds like with a bunch of tanks coming in. What were they, they doing that for? Well, they was practicing to go overseas. Uh -huh. And then they had two or three drinks that broke down and they stayed over there. So my cousin and I, we cooked and washed for them. And for the army? Yeah, for the guys that got left. They stayed two weeks without nobody coming back to check on them. They got out and climbed the trees, killed squirrels and rabbits and first thing and another. And then this girl, uh, my cousin, she would go cook chickens and she had to fry her chickens. She'd cook chickens and pies and things and give for them. 
And about what year was this? 42. About oh. 42. Uh -huh. Right after the war started. And they was here. They was in Tennessee off and on all the time for a long time. I have never heard that before, that they were doing maneuvers around here. You have never ever heard that? No. So if you have anything and more Well, to they fought during the Civil War here. Can you tell me about that? I don't know about it, except I know I've got a bullet to come from the Civil War. Really? I found down here in this field. Oh. Back oh. house. And also, they have been numerous arrowheads fell, fell out here. So evidently the Indians lived here at one time. So you don't remember any um, older community members ever talking about the Civil War? Well, I have a, my mother, mother uh, her, her daddy's mother, had a brother got killed during the Civil War, got killed at Fort Donaldson. And I've been looking up on my family history. And I go back to the 14, 1600s, they come from France, part of them. And my daddy was raised up on Cripple Creek up here, up top of the hill and turn off and go down that way. And that little house is still standing over there, I think, was. Wow. And, uh, They come, I've got him, they come out of Virginia and they're scotch Irish. I go back about 17 generations on my mother's mother's side. Mm -hmm. And her mother's brother lived at Manchester. They go, went, go back to when Manchester was Lucille Bobo was the first settler in, in Coffee County. Wow. So you don't, so growing up you don't remember any stories that people would tell about Reedyville or? They didn't want no stories about Reedyville. Well, what about we, things that had happened in the history of Reedyville? Nothing ever happened in Reedyville. <laughs> there must have been things that happened in Reedyville. I mean, maybe not national level things but just little things yeah. about people in the well, area. Well I do know they had drownings in Readerville. Uh -huh. <laughs> One got drowned right out there. Oh. He went out there and jumped in and drowned and oh. there's two or three drowned. There's a swimming hole down here to dam. The dam is right above the mill, you know, holds the water. Have you been to the dam? I haven't been to the dam. I've been to the mill. Well, I, I know two or three that drowned down there, and as far as anything else, they wasn't, well, nothing except people, two or three different ones committed suicide, but as far as that, only thing I know is one that I did anything, never, no fights or nothing, never hardly nothing like that. Mm -hmm. People got along then. You didn't have no break-ins or nothing else like that. You slept on, the, in the doors open and everything else. Mm -hmm. And you could go anywhere and you didn't have to worry about nothing. Mm -hmm. I know some some that slept on the porch at night so that it'd be so hot. Yeah, uh, one is safe anywhere. Mm. Well, so what do you know about the mill? About the history of the mill? Going through the mill, mm -hmm. I just know went over and played. <laughs> you played there? Yeah, we y played there. In the mill? Yeah, in oh. the mill. I've been on the fourth floor, I've been over where this girl that I'm ta told you about, she says one we and got killed over there running up down them steps. I used to be at the mill all the time, and my foster brother, he stayed over there with Mr. Justice most of the time when he wasn't working mm -hmm. and helped Mr. Justice out. Oh. What kind of things would he do? For Mr. Justice. Well, they just unloading flour, you know. They made flour there. You know how they make the flour. He'd help that. And then they'd take and load trucks to go out to deliver the flour to 
different communities everywhere around. Do you remember where they delivered to? Well, they lived in Curley and Woodbury and everywhere around. Uh -huh. Yeah, Mr. Justice had a good meal. He lived down here in Reedable. Uh, and then who ran the mill after Mr. Justice? Oh, Lord. I don't know those. Was it the Flipsies? Or the Flipsies? Was that? No. They had a funny name. <laughs> okay. Um, There's two different ones that moved over there. I never was <coughs> over there when they done that. Okay. Because I was married and had a little girl. I said, I, most of the time I was at home with her. Uh-huh. There's the uh, Flipsies. Ain't that what you said? Yeah. The mm -hmm. Flipsies and somebody else. Well, there was the Kerrigans. Yeah, Kerrigans. They the one that had the books that put out on sale, wasn't it? Kerrigans. It, that could and be. And they started a little, had a little store of a thing in there. Mm -hmm. I know that. I've been there. But far as going over and you know, like I said, I used to be over there all the time. I didn't go over there then because I was married. Uh -huh. So when you would be over there playing, what kind of things, what would you be doing? Uh, oh, we just romping around. <laughs> and Mr. Justice didn't mind you no. running around? No, he didn't mind. Did and I said Henry Holmes run a service station out there. And uh, his wife taught school at Kittrell's. And they had one son. And I said, I worked and I used to have to ride the bus to go to work. And when it was raining, why, he would wait to bring me to the house or not. I wouldn't have to walk to the house. Mr. Justice would bring you to the house? No, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes? Yeah, Henry Holmes. I'm not sure who that is. You're not familiar with that name. Well, his, he run the art service station out there where the post office is now, right across from the post office. And his wife was Jennifer's teacher. My daughter's Jennifer. Uh -huh. And uh, that a bird flew up oh. <laughs> He's after my cat food. Oh. Uh. Did you go swimming or anything at the dam? Oh, sw we went every day. And we had a, back where I live, we had a raft built down there, and a boat too. And at one time, we had the boat down there, belonged to Mr. Justice. And I had a bunch come from Woodbury, and those kids jumped off. And it's about 14 foot deep, and the, my, this girl and I jumped in and got them out. They would, they would have drowned. Their parents are sitting over in a shade tree, wasn't even watching them, young kids. They didn't need to be in that water anyhow. Mm -hmm. We had a diving board over there. And there used to be a diving board up here. And my nephew and I, we used to swim from down here. You know where the Robinson lives down there in Readable? Swim yeah. from there up here. Mm. And then when I, I floated back. He laughs about it. He says, you're the only person I ever seen that could float and never move a muscle hardly. <laughs> I float all day long. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't weigh three pounds when I was born. Wow. And I didn't gain no weight much till I married and had a baby. <laughs> We had good times down there at Readable. I said, one boy, he <coughs> kept flipping off backers and I kept telling him, stop it. He's a little young boy. I said, you're gonna have a skinned head. Next thing he come up and the blood come up before he did. <laughs> he skinned his head, laid it open. Mm. My kids all got together and done things then. Where now they don't they I think most a lot of them are starting to where they can get some dope. <laughs> but or what they can get into, I said can't believe it kids go in to destroy schools. I can't believe that. They never locked a door when I went to school. 
we went to school and we started to fire. To, we had a big pot-bellied stove and we'd always start to fire. A lot of times when I went to high grammar school at Curley's. Mm -hmm. Well, what else can you tell me about, um, I guess just your recreational time at the dam or at the mill? Any other stories about that? There are no stories about that. Just things that happened when you were there? or Wasn't well, nothing happened at, at, at all except there wasn't nobody there but uh, Mr. Justice and Elmer and, or somebody coming in and out. Because mm -hmm. it was a busy place, you know. They had a garage right where the store is now. And that's where everybody went to get the car fixed. And then Mr. Orville Tilford opened up a store over there in the lumber yard. And Tom still, his son still lives right there at the mill, and his grandson runs it now. <coughs> Reggie Tilford runs it now. The um, store? Uh, the mill, sawmill. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It caught a fire and burned part of it one night. And my foster brother took the lift and moved a lot of logs and he saved a lot of logs out of there that night. So I'm saying he's gonna get burned up, but he he sat sat in there burning it out. Hmm. He worked there for several years and he went to come and sign. Worked there about thirty years. And they used to be a sawmill up above uh, or the on the right side where the mill is up there, the oldest man I had a sawmill up there. He worked up there. They've had sawmills. There used to be a sawmill right out here at one time. Right here near your house? Yeah, right on the other side of where you come in right there at that gate. You go out right there at that lower part. There was an old sawmill there at one time. Why so many sawmills? There's money in lumber. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> who. Elmer, that's my foster brother. He, he worked in a mill uh, sawing down trees and everything for a long time till he broke his leg. And then he started working at sawmill, driving the lift of lift the lumber and logs. Worked there, I think, 11 years, and then he went to come and sign. And he wired them signs down there. So when you were growing up, your family got electricity from the mill? Or from the, the dam? You got electricity from the Reedyville mill? And you got ice, you said? Mm-hmm. Um, I've got a million of my face ice out of that mill. Got locked in there many times, too. <laughs> you got locked in there? <laughs> Mr. Hayes would put me in there and put you at the door, and then he would just fiddle and teasing me. He'd open up the door. He was aggravating me. No. I was little, and he just. I, said, I guess I was mischievous. I was like, he liked to aggravate me. I'm not really familiar with who this is. Mr. Hayes? Yeah. He owned. He was the one that owned the, song, uh, the mill. Okay. I haven't heard that name very often in my interviews, so oh, can you tell me a little about him? <clears throat> when did he own the mill? And Oh, he owned the mill when I was born. Hmm. I don't know when he started. But his wife lived right there in the house where you go down to the mill on the left side there, right on the race. That was where she was living when she died. And she also lived right up above where Tom Tilford lived at one time. And there's a tally that used to live up on that hill, and they call it Tally's Bluff. Have you heard that? Mm-hmm. And Robert A. Harris <coughs> lived in that little house there. When I was going first started school, me and him started school together, and he lived in that little house. That's where it's the I can't remember anybody living in that little house they moved. Up on know. Tally's Bluff? <laughs> right up there on Tally's Bluff. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, uh, 
as to then I don't know that oh, Miss Carter lived there and Mr. Bowman lived there. They've been several different ones that lived in that little house. And I don't know if I, I think it was Shrum lived there. Been different ones lived in that little house. Mm -hmm. And some of them are still living that lived in that little house. Well, Robert Day's living. He lived right, He lives up here on Fortville Road. Mm -hmm. Me and him the same age going to school. Mm -hmm. We started school together. Um, but we were talking about Mr. Hayes? Mr. No, Mr. Hayes. Uh, yeah, can you tell me about him? Well, the only thing I can tell you, he was just an old man <laughs> when I was a little girl. Uh -huh. And I see that was poor. I can remember too much except going down to the mill with my daddy. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who you would get the ice from? Yeah. And his son killed himself. Huh. Huh. Out on Tasty Road. What about um, Rat McFerrin? Well, Rat McFerrin lived there, and he had, uh, I reckon it was two boys and two girls, and two girls was teachers, and I went to school with both of them, and went to school with the youngest of them. And he run that store over there. The store? Right, it's, it stood on right there on the race, on the upper side of the race. Okay. Now, he, right where that house sits over there now. Okay. Now, he ran the mill as well yeah. at one point. Oh. So, do you remember when he... I, I, that was when I was probably four or five years old. I can't remember what, uh, except just going most of the time down there when my daddy took. Okay. And they, maybe to the store. And I said, then you could get candy for anything or anything you wanted for nothing. And now you can't buy candy for nothing. Yeah. I went to school with Matt McFerrin's two daughters, Ruby and Bertha, and they both lived to the last few years. They died over at Auburn Town, I'd say in the last 10 years. And their son too, the youngest son. And then I had a sister who died when she was 23, and she went to school with Thomas, they were, I think, in the same class. And there was a Mr. and Mrs. Lehman that taught school at Culpeper, and uh, they were German descent. And I had them in high grammar school, and then I went to school at Woodbury, and I had Mrs. Lehman as my music teacher. <laughs> And I also had Maynette Pascal as my music teacher. Miss Langman was a little old white-headed woman and she was as straight as an arrow. But she was just white-headed as she could be. What can you tell me about the Reedy family? I don't know them about the Reedy family. But, so you never, you don't remember ever hearing no, anything I, about them? Oh, uh, the only thing I know about them, that was when my daddy was a young man. Mm-hmm. All I ever remember no leave but out there was Lawrence Parker. And I don't know who lives out there now. Uh -huh. uh, did your dad ever tell you stories about growing up in this area or? Well, my daddy didn't live in this area at first. He lived at Curlie. Uh -huh. He was raised, as I said, up on uh, Cripple Creek. Mm -hmm. And then they went, they moved over there. My granddaddy lived over there and his grandson still lives over there, where the, my grandparents lived. They lived over close to Clay. You go up by the flashing light and go out there, turn off and go back across there. And it's, they all lived up in that Clay community. My daddy had three brothers and three sisters. I had one aunt that lived. She would have been 106 when she died. And her son, one of them was a chief of police or, uh, or something in Nashville. He worked at the police station. I think he was an intelligence guy. And then one of them did, there's two of them that done furniture, refurnished furniture there in Muffetsburg. So how did your dad get to Reedyville? 
When did he move here? Well, when we moved to Reedville, we moved right up here at 27, I said, October 27. I know when we moved up there. I was three years old, but I know when they moved because I've been told that. Uh-huh. You don't remember everything, but right. I, can, I know about a lot of stuff back then. And uh, that's when I was going to meal with him was when I was small, too. Mm -hmm. So I can't remember everything going, except for when I'd go to Brown's Mill with him, there would always be the convict uh, convicts over there cooking dinner for the road gang to work on the roads. And I was scared to death. <laughs> I was a little I'm scared to death. My dad said, they, gonna bother you. they had ball and chains on. They wasn't going to go nowhere much. Well, then Brown, he teased me when I'd go over there. I I was all over that mill over there, but it fell in out to I The Brown's Mill? Yeah. What were the differences between the Brown's Mill and the Reedville Mill? Well, he had so much <laughs> eat and all that. The uh, way he took it, done it. If people, a lot back then, you know, a lot of them couldn't afford to pay for it, you know, hardly. And they'd take the grain, he'd take the grain in. And he'd take and put it in the meal. And then when we want meal, he'd always go to the meal and get a hundred pound of flour at a time. <laughs> That's what we'd get, a hundred pound at a time. And I said, we didn't ever go shopping every day. You don't have to, he uh, bought his, uh, he'd go buy pinto beans or white beans, a uh, hundred pound at a time. You raise your garden. We only put out about 25 rows of sweet potatoes and about three or four rows of uh, cabbage and <laughs> everything. You had a garden and my mother put it up. What else did you plant in your garden? Everything. Cucumbers, turnip greens, turnips, <laughs> and um, squash, just everything. Just one thing from another. Mother always made her kraut, made her uh, candies, everything. Uh, where did you store? I mean, when you buy a hundred pounds of flour and beans, where did you store that stuff? We had a place up the stairs that they put the stuff like that. Oh. We had upstairs up there, and we had sheds out there to put stuff in. You had a smokehouse outside to put your meat in, and your lard and stuff, set it out there. They had, you had their places, everything. And when I was little, where we lived up there, our barn burned. My mother like got burned up in it. They was hauling hay and it caught a fire. And they built a barn when I, I guess I was in the fifth grade when it burned. I was small then, <laughs> but I can remember uh, she was carrying out saddles and trying to let the stock out of the barn. And the fire knocked her down twice. She said she finally made it out and she decided she better not go back in. Did your family lose a lot of stuff in that fire? Well, a lot of, lo lost everything he had, that bridles and things that wasn't there. He was all in hay, but he had bridles and saddles and things. Cause we rode, I rode a horse everywhere I went. And I said, people go wild on riding horses now, and that's the only way I had to go when I was little. I'd get on and ride and go to Curlie to see somebody or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we had buggies, and we'd go. We always went in a buggy. Mama and them went in the car, but we'd go in the buggy when we ride a horseback. The kids did, you know, to go. That's the way to go. Mm -hmm. But 
but uh, I said, I don't know how many years Mr. Justice owned this mill, but he run it for a long time. And then it went down after he went out. And Flips is like the, they sold all the stones. I think it's them that sold all the stones out of there. I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't think so because people had the mill after the flip season. I went over there a few times. So I, thought, I don't know which one Elmer says they sold some of them stones out of there. He's mad about it. He didn't like it. He said hmm. that was a mill. They just didn't need to sell out nothing out of there. Hmm. If you ever go down there, and they uh, they run it over though. They had marks out there on the porch how I, what deep the water got hmm. over my head. That's what I said. <laughs> oh, Tom may be looking out for over his head one day down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard about the marks. Uh -huh. uh, Mary said Tom wears every time it comes a big rain. I said, well, he may be waiting. It may come one one of these days. I seen it go around. It come through the yard down here in these two houses, but it don't. It still got a long ways to come up here. And it went around the post office and through that garage over there, and run over the top of the bridge out there. And then they pulled some through with a tractor, and I was, there's one like that went over the bank down there. I said. He tried to go through it, and I said, you don't go through water where you can't, because there's no banisters there. Mm -hmm. And that house there, they raised that house up. It used to get in there every time it rained. The one by the mill? Yeah, right down there in that hole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, that's a place I wouldn't have, and I wouldn't be live there for nothing. I'd rather live in the tent side of the road than to live in that house. Who lives there right now? I don't know. Okay. I don't know people lives in Readable now. Oh. So don't <laughs> I don't. No, that's fine. Oh. All the people that lived in Readable nearly are gone. Mm -hmm. I said, Paul Vaughn, I don't know whether you know who Paul Vaughn is. He's a photographer in Muffetsburg. I think he makes them in his house now. He lives in the house where Mr. Justice lives. And at one time, old Uncle Will Jaton lived there. One store. And then Ms. Yuri's house burned, and Roy Lamb, if I reckon Will still lives there, he was living there, and he passed away a year or two ago. And... The Craigs lived in here, in this house. They call it Lady McKnight House. That's what used to be who owned it. And uh, these Braggs lived in that house. And Virgil Conley lived there with them. Him and his wife, who was Craig's daughter. And they was different ones after Craig's died out that has lived there, and now there's the Arnett boy, man, they, I think they call him Arnett, Ben Arnett lives there. And I don't know, but I think Jane Rust lives in a Brevard house, don't she? I don't know. I'm not sure. At the house up there on the hill on that side was from Barry Ann's is uh, where, where Barry Ann lives. That was the uh, Brevard house too. Brevard's on that. Who was, who are they? Well, they, <laughs> I don't know except they were the Brevards. And, oh. Uh, Margaret Bavard was a teacher at, uh, I think, out at MTSU and Mary Hall. They got a building out there named after Mary Hall, ain't they? I don't know. Hmm. 
It's um, such a big campus. I'm not familiar with all of the oh, yeah, buildings. <laughs> I used to know what another thing was, but they've changed that campus altogether different. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what am I supposed to tell you now? I think about everything I know. Uh, tell you about all them. Uh, Joe Barker lived out on the hill out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, at one time, there was a Perry man lived out there going out Bivens Hill Road when I was little. And Betty Jane Perry was Barry Ann's first cousin. Her daddy was a brother to him. They lived up there. They used to be here and they went to Arkansas. A lot of people that lived here moved off and a lot of them died away. What'd you lose? My pen. My Okay. Um, so you don't, you weren't really aware of the uh, restoration or anything of the mill? I knew they were doing it over. I know they was doing that. But far as uh, from the time I married on, I never was at the mill too much except go down there once in a while. After Mr. Justice, maybe go mm. down there and get flour or something. But. I was too, too big to get down there and grow up in the mill. I was over there when Kerrigan's running. And he also run a store down in Grants and uh, Nashville. He sold books down there. He had a little market in there. Mr. Kerrigan? Mm-hmm. He had uh, uh, hook books he sold. At the mill? Mm-hmm. I think it's Kerrigan that died another night. Hmm. And what else did they sell? They had a little stand there. They sold different things and tried to sell little jellies and things like that. You know, I don't know what Tom sells. Hmm. I never have been down there except for he got it made done. I was there once, um, and I know they. They sell the stuff that they make in the mill, like the um, grits and cornmeal. Well, I don't go eat breakfast there because I don't like breakfast. Oh. <laughs> I don't need me going over there to eat breakfast. I don't eat eggs myself no time. Mm -hmm. and I don't care about grits. <laughs> Did they'd have to be full of syrup if I ate them. <laughs> so you haven't been down there since the renovations? Mm -hmm. No. Um, Mary carried me down there one time, and he's down there when he's working on it. You know who I'm talking about? No. Girl that run, runs the store over there. Mm -hmm. Beside of him. Oh, okay. And uh, I went down there, and he was down there, saw it. I see him. You see him all the time, but don't ever see him no more. Tom Brady? Mm hmm. Oh. I've not met him. I used to see him at the, up at Mayor's all the time. He's up there eating dinner or something and all the fun all the time, but I don't see him no more. But I don't go over there no more either. <laughs> I don't pretty much stay put at home. I don't go nowhere much. Uh -huh. oh. I'm like, uh, another I got a friend up here. She says, ain't nobody's place like home. I said, no. I, during the winter, I did uh, jigsaw puzzles. And now I do crossword puzzles. I do every one that come out in the paper. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I'd love to hear more about this area and about the mill in particular. Uh, Only thing I know about the mill was back years ago, going down there with my daddy and all. And when Emma worked over, I was over there. And I know who lived around there. And I know who lived in every house in Readable then, and now I don't know who lives in none of them. Uh -huh. uh, did you ever go to parties or anything at the mill or hoedowns? No, they had nothing like that. Okay. If I ever know of. 
They didn't have no parties much back when I was growing up. Uh -huh. Most of them was at school. Uh -huh. You had, they had a school dances, you know, and all. What were the school dances like? Just regular old square dances. <laughs> okay. I went to a really small school growing up and we didn't have any dances, so. I you didn't have no dances no. either? Mm -mm. Where'd you go to school? I went to a really small school in New York. Um, well, my daddy didn't like for me to dance. So he didn't, oh, really? Uh, why is that? Well, he didn't think it's nice for girls to get out and dance. That's <laughs> he was one of them older men, you know. My daddy was 51 when I was born. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's 20 years older than my mother. So, all of his people has gone. And I said, uh, I had a cousin, she and I worked on everything but on her line of her grandmother and my daddy was first cousin, other sisters, brothers and sisters. So I helped her get her line of family up. And bless her heart, she passed away at 69 years old, about four years ago. Mm -hmm. Her brother died in February and she died in December. Mm -hmm. Only the last two in that family. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't go, to, I never did go to the meal after I married much, just get down there and maybe get a sack of flour or pick them up or something like that. Uh -huh. But I used to be down there all the time when I was growing up. And was over there at the garage all the time. My daddy's first cousin run that garage. And of course I knew George Hollingsworth and Miss Margaret. I used to meet Miss Margaret I helped clean that house out over there and the one across the road in front of the store now. There's no telling how many times I've helped clean that out. Mud would be up, well, it'd be three or four foot deep up in the house. They had to move uh, up and upstairs, move a woman. She couldn't be moved nowhere, and they moved her upstairs down there. And she went, she was just renting there, but she... They got her out of there, and they did, she never did go back. But it gets around the, up the road. I have seen it go across the road up above Reedwell store there, Tilford store. Mm -hmm. And it also goes around by the post office out Bivens Hill Road. I've seen it do that. That's one of the last big ones they had. When was that? Oh, Lord. That's been in the sixties, I guess. Mm -hmm. Cause my daughter was still in school, and she finished in '69. But I, uh, Barry and Moore. Her mama lived down there in Readable too, at one time. And the ones that lived there one time when I was living there, their son drowned in the race over there. He, Christmas Eve night, didn't see his girlfriend at Woodbury. And his mama told him not to stay out late. He stayed out late and he's, I guess, rushing. Black woman found him the next morning. She seen the skid marks. And found his body thrown out over there. Mm -hmm. And they lived in that house where Jane's grandmother lived. Well, what's I gonna do with what I'm telling you? I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's really just trying to get the history of the mill and it's kind of the history of the area as well. 
Uh. Well, do you know they used to have baptizing down the back of the mill? Really? I hadn't heard that yet. So please oh, tell me about tell that. that uh, well, used to the black people there, uh, right there where the garage is there, go down the banks of the river, where the bluff runs around down there. They used to be black people be baptized down there. Oh. Down below Tally's Bluff. <laughs> what was that? I said down below Tally's Bluff. <laughs> oh. Uh. Were there a lot of African Americans in the community? Well, at that time there were several. Oh. They used to be a black couple, a family lived here. And he was the first one I ever know that lived here. Now he had a car. And he did painting, and he did uh, paper. His wife took in washing. His daughters cooked, and she cooked. And they was, they was a big family of them. Do you remember their name? Yeah, I thought I'd pardon. The name of the family? Yeah, Bud Brandon. Bud Brandon? <laughs> yeah, and Day Day they called her. I don't know what her name was. They okay. called her Day Day. Uh -huh. And when my daughter was born, she come, waited to snow and come down there to see that baby. And she said, what would you name it? And I told her. She said, well, I don't ever remember that. I named her Jennifer Lee. And she said, I, I just called her my baby. So that's what she called her all the time, my baby. Uh -huh. Did she watch Jennifer? No, she just come down there to see her. Okay. New baby. Uh huh. She was born on uh, 29th March, and we had a big snow the thir first day of April. So she come down there to see it. Uh -huh. And uh, but they used to have that church. There's a black church over there. I don't know whether anybody's ever told you they used to have a black church over in Reedwood. No. And a black schoolhouse over there in Reedwood. Oh, I've not heard that. Please, I would love to hear more about this. Well, they had the schoolhouse and. They was uh, right where this house up here, Ray Barker's daddy had two or three rent houses and they had black people worked, lived in them. And then they had, uh, over here, they had a church over here on the, I was always taught it, <laughs> uh, back where blacks was over there. They still several blacks over there. And, uh, there was Bob Taylor's bunch and Uni Robinson's and Son McBroom and a Weatherly and I can't think of his name right now. And there's a black one they called Squirrel and I don't know what his name was except Squirrel. <laughs> uh, and, uh, There was a whole, a whole bunch of them that lived over there. Mm -hmm. Then there's a, well, there's a swamper that lived over there. And Sam Dunn lived over there. There's just a big bunch lived over there. Mm -hmm. And they have a nigger church right up here. You used to <clears throat> you used to call sea tick right on top of the hill over here. Do you see it when you come up the hill? You notice it when you go back down on the other side, just right there if you jump off the top of the hill. It's on the left where the road turns to the left. The black church there. Okay. And, and where's the schoolhouse? The schoolhouse is gone. When they used to have it, though, when I was little, the black girls who used to live next door to us went to school down there. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I'm thinking that uh, the nigger woman that taught up here at West Side, I'm thinking she taught over here the license. Taught over at the nigger school. They started going to Woodbury to black school. And then they started going to Muffersburg to the black school. They cut out all the black schools up here. Do you know why they did that? It's, I reckon just not enough blacks that they wanted to fool with them, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. So when you went to school, um, the entire time you were in school, were schools segregated? Mm-mm. No? 
And that's after I was married before they were doing that. When they desegregated schools? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, when I went to school, the blacks went to school over here, and I went to school up here. Okay. About two miles up the road. Uh -huh. And they went to school over there. Did you have any black friends? I, well, I played with the blacks because they let me live next door to us. Mm -hmm. This little black girl, my daddy dipped snow, <laughs> and she'd come up there and she'd say, Mr. Reed, give me a dip of snow. She'd say, roll your lip out here and I'll give you some. <laughs> That's about the first thing she'd say when she come because they didn't have money to buy stuff and eat out snow. <laughs> He, he dipped and smoked and smoked a pipe and smoked cigars. <laughs> and I don't tell me that smoking kills a person. He lived to be about 80 years old. <laughs> I said, they said ham meat will kill you. And my uncle lived to be 98 and he eat ham all the time. <laughs> I, said, I don't know what it is. It must be something in this what you're eating. Uh, nowadays they're putting in it to kill you. Because the be. old days when you eat meat, you eat meat. You, it wasn't something stuck in it to keep it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. My aunt used to can sausage. I love sausage, and you know, and I'd go over and stay all night with her. And we'd always go upstairs. She had a place up there she fixed, and they put uh, sawdust, and they would can her stuff and put it under that sawdust and keep it from freezing. Then when she wanted something, she'd go up there and get it. So when I'd go, she said, let's go get us a can of sausage. <laughs> but the meal has changed so much since uh, everything. How so? Well, the meal in itself has not changed, except they've redone it. Mm -hmm. But as far as being what it used to be, well, it's not. Because used to, when I was little, somebody was there going in and out all the time, you know. And it's not that way now. They got it blocked off where you can't go in. Mm -hmm. It's open on Saturdays, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But back then, they didn't have no fence around it. You went when you wanted to. And they also had a building across there where they parked their buggies and things in that shed. You know that, didn't you? No, mm-mm. Right, right across from where the, you know where the, where the ice house was? Mm-hmm. Okay, right across from the ice house, right across that race, they had a building set there, right, built right over the race. You drove in from that side over there, right straight across from the ice house. There's a buggy shed that drove his, kept his buggy in there. And Margaret Hollingsworth, uh, no man, uh, Hayes' great great granddaughter, who lives, I think, out on Short Mountain, where you're talking about going to the distillery. I don't know whether she's still living or not, but she was. And they die, and I don't ever know they die. <laughs> uh, but that house over there, the water would get up and upside, it would turn the furniture upside down. It'd be so much in water through there. And one old lady, she lived there, and she left her pocketbook in her suitcase on the bed, and then she wanted to go in when the water was over her head to get it. And I said, forget it. And it had washed from the upper, upper side down to the kitchen, and it lodged. Huh. That's how, and the kitchen door was open. It, it, she was just lucky it didn't wash away. Yeah. But I said one time it come through in the house across from where the store is now. The family that lived there, they had chickens and first one thing or another. It washed everything in the yard away. Mm -hmm. And it, it'll wash everything away again. For the, somebody, uh, I think they told me over there that the guy had two little old donkeys over there. I said, well, they better put them somewhere else because them donkeys will be washed away if it ever comes a big flood again. Now, Robert Hay, he don't about the bill, but he wouldn't tell you nothing about the kids. He's, uh, 
being voted into the Hall of Fame for coach. He used to be coach up here at the high school. Oh. That's the one I'm talking about that lived up there in that tally house. Uh-huh. And me and him went to school together. We were cousins. And... Uh, he's being voted into the Hall of Fame. I they made the high only thing sometime in May, but he's a basketball coach for years at Woodbury. When one of the boys I finished school with got killed the first thing in the Army when he got out of school. Two of them. And his two brothers from school got killed at the same, about the same time. But she didn't know enough about the tanks and all. They were soldiers that marched up and down this road. You see them marching in troops like, you know, in training like that on TV and everything. Well, they was marching up down this road and all the way around through, all over to Beach Grove and all over on the other side of Bradable. When you say this road, you mean Lester Barker Road mm -hmm. or? Let's go up the road. They will march for days on end. Come from through from Las Casas, you know where Las Casas is. Mm -hmm. Come from Las Casas and just march, march and march and march. Be just gangs and gangs of them. Wow, this is during World War Two. Mm -hmm. During World War Two, they they stayed here for a long time, and they've. Where my granddaddy lived, my daddy lived down, my mother lived down there, and I stayed up here and went to school with my cousin up here. And uh, down there, they would camp right in the door, and they did down here in Readable. I lived, my home place in Readable was right down here. Hmm. It's after you go out at the third house where the house used to be, it burned after we moved away and my daddy died mother remarried and, and the house burned if some guy lived there I don't know he may have said it before he's an old drunk <laughs> I don't know how it burned but that but they did have you could go you could hear the singing down there when they'd have that baptizing mm -hmm. you could hear them singing singing down there have you ever been to black service no i haven't I, we used to go to black services up here on the hill oh. what were they like well they just they're happy when they sing <laughs> everything you see them on the TV how they sing, don't you? Uh-huh. But I used to go to their services all the time. I never was in service over here. But I could hear the uh, church bell on Sunday mornings. I always raised the church bell for them to come to service. But all the black, older blacks are gone. They a few left of the younger grandsons and all of them left. There's one that has been over there for years. So she cut her leg off mowing her yard and she's in a rest home in Woodbury. Mm -hmm. But I hadn't been down to the mill since I redone it. I don't go to the store very often. When I go, I usually go to Muppetsburg or Woodbury one. Mm -hmm. They don't care everything I want. Mm -hmm. So there's no need running one place or the other. I have a question. Uh, I know that you said your family would get flour and stuff from the mill, mm. like 100 pound bags. After you got married, would you still get flour and stuff from the mill? No, my daddy wouldn't run the thrasher. You see that yellow pa paper there? The envelope? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That manila? I thought that was 
going to win. No, this ain't, this is not it. I'm going to show you, but I guess it ain't it. Uh, is it in the little one in there? No. So when did, where would you get your flour and stuff from after that? After that, the store. The stores in town? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It might be in a bigger one. Maybe in a white one. Now. Let's see this one. Okay. Right. I don't think it's in them. Let me uh, pause this. No, it meal didn't even concern me because I didn't care about it because always, it's always been there to meal to me. Uh huh. It was just not something that you didn't think about it because it was just a part of your it life. It was just a place to go. Uh-huh. place to get your meal, and that's the only thing I... Just like going to the store. Well, you don't think about going to the store. But my daddy always carried meal down there. Went down there and got ice. We had an ice box. We kept ice in back then. Go down there and get ice and to keep... But we also had a spring that was like ice water running out from under the hillside where we kept our milk and all. They'd keep the milk in that. Really? Wow. But we had water. Uh, we didn't have lights where I was raised until I was 17. But we also had running water in the house. <laughs> Everything, you know. So you kept your milk outside. Well, we uh, we kept it down in the spring house. Mm -hmm. Well, we had a spring house. Water run out from the hillside, mm -hmm. and it was cold water. It's good, good cold. Well, that's where we got our water to drink. We had it running out from up, uh, it being pipes and running in the house and running on the back porch, but we didn't drink that because it gets so hot, you know. We drink. Have to go to spring to get good cold water. How far was that from your house? Oh, just a few steps down the hillside. One far. One as far as it is from here to where I come up the road. Just like walking down the hills. Hmm. But we all had a job to do back when I was growing up and but every one of us had to go get water <laughs> I don't know why but I guess cause the sun was hot you know in winter time you could drink the cold water coming out of faucets but in summertime it'd be boiling hot but my daddy he always he worked the last few years he was the day that he died, he'd cut out a fence row. He walked with a crutch and he made a garden with a spade and a hoe. Sat in a chair and dug that dirt up in the garden and made a garden. But we always had plenty of stuff in the garden. I always had stuff here till this last, since Amber passed away, I hadn't had no garden. But I've got some tomato plants out there now. I'm hoping they have tomatoes cut. Elmer says I love them tomatoes better than anybody ever seen dinner, breakfast, and supper, whatever, and in between meals. Mm -hmm. I love tomatoes. Mm. I just. Made a sandwich is good enough for me. Just eat tomato and bread. <laughs> Did you have a lot of tomatoes in your garden growing up? Why, well, yes. Mother canned tomatoes, made juice, and made soups and everything. What else did she can? You said, you mentioned sauerkraut and... Well, we didn't, uh, we had sweet potatoes. My daddy always dug a place for the turnips. He'd always dig a hole in the garden, and he'd put the turnips in, and then he'd put the dirt over it, and he'd put a straw over that, and then he'd put a 
metal roof over that to keep water from going in. And we go and when we wanted in turnips or anything, you go out there and pull them out of the bank. That way you sweep potatoes like that too. And we always put the Irish potatoes in the house. And then mother made kraut and then the canned tomatoes and canned corn and whatever you normally can just to have food all the time. And there was never a day that we didn't have something sweet sitting on the table. She cooked tea cakes. She'd cook them, take part of them. She'd put chocolate icing on some for, and put vanilla on some. Then she'd put a pink going icing on some. And uh, she made molasses bread, they call it. Make some of the best biscuits you ever eat. <laughs> And what I liked was biscuits and sausage. <laughs> Are you hot? No, I'm fine, actually. I'm good. Thank you. I've got one air conditioner on. i got another one, but I thought I, I'm not ever hot. Mm -hmm. No, I think it feels nice in here. No, I don't know. I hadn't been to the mill in a long time. The only time I went down there is when Tom first started just putting the flooring down. And did you talk to him? I talked to him several different times. Mm -hmm. Can oh, you tell me about your conversations with him? I'll just talk, let's go sit and let's see him and that's about it. Mm -hmm. Never talked to him about nothing much. He's always over at the store when I'd see him. Over at Mary's and Russell's. Uh -huh. But, yeah, I said, my nephew come in one day and he wanted to go see it and the gate was closed and he lives in Texas. Both of them wanted to see it. I said, well, Tom's got the gate locked. And, and I got a friend, he was going to see it. He, I think he's coming to maybe tomorrow. We're going to the distillery. He wants me to go see it. Show him where to go to the distillery. And I know a guy that uh, uh, runs a distillery. Oh, uh, Billy Kaufman? No, really, Ricky Estes. Oh. Huh. You don't know Ricky Estes? No. Nope. Well, his wife and I worked together for years. Oh. Where at? Colonial Shirt Factory. And I said, I'd been knowing Ricky years and his whole family and I said I'm going out there and see him I said I don't know what he wants to go for he just wants to go look he went up wanted to come me to go with him to Short Mountain we went to Short Mountain and he got he got fell the full he got to the top he was ready to turn around and come back <coughs> we turned around and come back his wife said, don't you ever carry me no place like this before. <laughs> she said, I didn't know it was going to be like this. I wouldn't have been coming up here. <laughs> said, Just look down in them hills there. Did your dad ever make moonshine? No. No. He didn't. He kept moonshine or kept liquor. I'm asthmatic. And I said, I coughed all night long or something. I said, I do now. I uh, get out and everything. I try to stay in as much as I can. That's the reason I don't get out and go no more. It's bad out there now. And I got a granddaughter. She's awful. She's going to the doctor constantly. She can't get over that cough. She gets out and mows the yard and that's, that brings it on. But she can't stand to put them things on to stop the dirt and all. It smothers her out. <laughs> I don't know how many times she's been to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And they said she was one of the worst things they've seen. So your dad didn't make moonshine, but he, he had it? Yeah, we we, he, we kept it as a toddy when we got sick drinking. Uh, he'd make a hot toddy. You know what a hot toddy is? Uh, no, why don't you tell me, please? 
We pick, you put you some hot water and some little sugar and your liquor and lemon in there and make a drink. Uh-huh. It'll cut the flame out of your throat now. Oh. Where did he get the moonshine from? Why, well, somebody always had it. As I said, squirrel, black guy. <laughs> uh-huh. I, he'd come up and bring him a pie or something like that once in a while. Uh-huh. My daddy knew all the blacks around. We had black people lived with us too on our place. Hmm. And Just renting, or did they work for your work father? for my daddy? Oh. He always had hands to work, uh -huh. and he had a. My daddy had been married before he married my mama, and his wife died when my half brother was four years old. And she stayed with him for 10 years, the black lady woman. She was his neighbor mammy. <laughs> hmm. So him and my mama married. And my mama was 19 when they married, and he was 31 years older than her. But he took care of the old black lady when she died, though. He also ran the, the poor house, they call it back then. You know what a poor house is where the people in ca the county, well, they had one in Rutherford County, too. That's Rutherford County farm out there on Rooker Lane. I think they got a rest home out there now instead of that. But they poor people that just that didn't have a home or something, they stayed there. And they've been, a lot of people worked over there. Where was that? It's off on 64, right up about three miles over here. Hmm. But he lived in three or four different houses up there, and then where I was born up here on Locks Creek, is gone. And then we moved across over on high, Old Highway 70 and lived there a year or two. Then we moved up here, and that's where I lived 17 years. But they've been different people on the stores here. They've been so many different ones. I don't know. I don't know whether I could even think of all of them. There've been so many that come through. But yeah. We had the same postmistress for years and years and years. Margaret Holland, uh, Margaret Roots, and then when Margaret Hollingsworth took over and run it for a long time. And now we have different ones all the time out there. And I don't know. Trying to think who else ran here, the li lived ran here. Uh, we had school teachers that lived here and readable, and we've had preachers that lived here and doctors used to be. Uh, where the house where I lived in was a doctor's house at one time. And then out the road was another doctor, and then where Uncle Dave Macon's wife, uh, sister, her husband was a doctor. He was Dr. Urey. Had three doctors in town. And, of course, everybody don't know that either. I'm, no one that I've interviewed so far has talked about the doctors, so. Hi, right, doctor. The house I lived in had... Uh, 14 foot ceilings and nine windows was nine foot tall. Had a uh, hallway all the way through, and then three big rooms on each side, and a little room where his office was at, and then the kitchen and the back porch. It was screened in back porch. And it was, you could walk on the back side of the house.
I thought maybe you knew who lived down there and sent her and heard her talk about some of them down there. No. I met her, Jane, at the post office in the other no. day. No. I went to the post office and uh, while I was in there, I walked in. She was standing there and she turned around and said, I'm Jane Lewis. I said, well, I'm Mabel Hilton. She said, oh, I better want to meet you. <laughs> and I said, well, I said, what's your name? My name's Jaren Abdallah. I noticed Abdallah was something, but I couldn't. How you spell your first name? J-A-R-Y-N. Like it's J-A-R-R-Y, nearly like that, isn't it? Uh-huh. Spell it like it's J-A-R-R-Y. No, J-A-R-Y-N. I said it's just like you're spelling it the way it sounds. It's like it's Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw her out there. I go to the post office nearly every day. I didn't go today. I went yesterday. I hardly ever miss a day, but I didn't want to go today. <laughs> so I didn't want to do much of nothing today. Sit well, down here and read the paper and work my puzzles. Uh -huh. Well, I'm went. glad that you uh, agreed to sit down and talk with me. I said, I like to work them puzzles in the paper. Uh-huh. I like to work the jigsaw puzzles. I really love them, but it gets so hot and sitting there. My granddaughter says, I wouldn't work one of them for nothing. She says, you run me crazy. I said, makes you think. Keeps you young. Keep your mind working, don't it? Yeah. I said, I had open heart surgery in 2000. I said, I went to the doctor. It was last Thursday. Yeah, and I said, he said, well, you're doing good. I said, the EKG is grand. I said, well, that's good. He said, I'm going to let you live to be 100. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sure hope so. And I said, no, nah, I don't think so. I, I'm all right except my back. I, down, I had a wreck. Man, my daughter and I had a wreck in 68. And they give us each one 50-50 chance to live. And, well, it happened in October, and I couldn't go back to work till February. Wow. And I couldn't remember what I was doing. It's a good thing, you know, talking to me now, because I, <coughs> my sister said if everything I said was in my pocketbook, a tractor, tra uh, re uh, semi couldn't hold it. I'm so off talking, just rattling and everything I'm talking to, everything's in my pocketbook in my pocketbook. <laughs> uh, yeah, any more stories about growing up or about Uncle Dave Macon I know we talked a little bit about or um Well, I don't know nothing about Uncle Dave except he, he I told you I'll tell you a joke. <laughs> he he was full of them jokes, you know. And he'd tell my daddy one and he'd say I t I t then he'd say, tell her what my, my daddy raised my three uh, sisters' kids, grandkids for him. Oh, he'd send one of them to get me, and I'd say, I don't want to go. And I, I'd hide out a lot of times to get out of the house where he wouldn't be aggravating. I, he was there worse than ever. Anyway, and he said, I'll tell you one. But you can't hear the one. He called my daddy Bear, said, I can't tell you what Bear is, I'm going to tell Bear. He's a dirty one. <laughs> I but uh, he loved his moonshine. He was talking about moonshine. He <laughs> loved his moonshine. But my daddy said, you can't come here drinking, Dave. And his daddy didn't drink. Mm -hmm. Dave loved his moonshine. And I said he got on the well, I went to work one time. And he got on the bus and he said, I thought I'd seen Mabel. And Barry Reed's daughter. And the girl told him, I'll tell you what he said later. I ain't going to tell you that. <laughs> I said, he had that bus a roaring. I said, I was so embarrassed I could got up and killed him. <laughs> The next morning I went out and got on the bus to go and the bus driver I rode with him every day and he said, Maybe we're gonna pick old Dave up this morning. 
I said, you pick up a day book and I'm getting off right there. <laughs> I'm not going to work. <laughs> but Uncle Dave lived just right down the road here, you know. No. He lived about four miles down here. Where you see Kittrell, when you go back through, uh -huh. you can see the big long white house right there. Where you turn, it says B&W, but you go right on down here and look out there. That's his house out there. Uh -huh. And he married uh, my foster brother's daddy's sister. And then he's got kids and grandkids that plays music now. And his son that lived with him killed himself up here at Woodbury, Doris, that played with him. He lived in a big brick house right there where you go in red light at Woodbury. You go through Woodbury, you look, you going out to Short Mountain. You going by yourself? No, no. Um, I'm not sure when I'll get there, but not today. Well, I didn't mean me today. Oh. But it's no trouble to find Short Mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go out Woodbury, go straight on through Woodbury. Now, if you get to the top of the hill, you'll see east, out there, about four miles out there, you'll see east side school. You turn to the left of the road there, go out to the end there, to that road, and turn to your left again, and it'll carry you right into Short Mountain. But, uh, Uncle Dave, uh, he had seven boys. One of them was a preacher and one of them was a sot. <laughs> and one of them disappeared. When did he disappear? He went into service in World War II and he come back here. Had a wife and a little girl. And he disappeared. Nobody knows where he went to. He disappeared after he came back or while mm -hmm. he was... Oh. Huh. And his... One of them is a preacher who was also a school teacher. He taught down here at Kitchell School. But uh, Uncle Dave was a character. Sounds like it. He was something else. He, was, he liked to have fun. But, uh, my, my nephew says he's a dirty old man. <laughs> Because <laughs> he was the one he'd sit after me a lot of times, you know. He said, he's a dirty old man. <laughs> so, well, he preaches at church sometimes. And I said, Bobby don't care over like that stuff like that, you know. Well, I went to the doctor Thursday. He called me Thursday morning, he called me Friday morning, he called me Saturday morning, and he called me again Sunday morning. He lives in Texas. <laughs> hmm. He said, are you all right? I said, I'm all right. And I got two nephews that live out there. And got a, their sister is in Boulevard Terry. She's got Alzheimer's. But she knows everything. She can, talk, she can talk to you about what's happened like this, like she went to the meal and everything, too. Mm. But she can't remember what she does in 10 minutes from now. Mm. Uh, Short time memory. Yeah. Well, we've got a couple of more minutes, if you can think of anything else. Um, well, I've told you several things. That's I know. That there's somebody else I haven't told you. I know. This has been really, really good. This is a lot of new information. So that's great. Well, I said, I don't, well, everybody don't know they had all of it. Nobody knows all of it stuff, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I said, there's a lot of stuff. I said, but I said, the meal over here, of all the meal, Tilford Mill, I reckon it's still in business. He run a, also run a grocery store there for a long time. 
his wife and his daughter and son-in-law and daughter-in-law will run it. And they they still sell logs over there, buy logs. And Randy went to school, his grandson went to school with my daughter. And I never went to school with none of them because well, the ones my age went somewhere else to Skitcher School, and I went to Woodbury. I finished school in Woodbury. And I said, you used to, you went where you wanted to, and now they don't, they have to send you a place to go and you ride, ride 50 miles to go to school. It looks to me like it'd take them all in one block so far and then another block so far and then if we have to go something else and not run them. This friend of mine I'm talking about wants me to go with him. Mm -hmm. His son first went to <laughs> Mitchell Nielsen and his, grand and his daughter. Then his oldest girl went to finish school at Oakland. The youngest girl, I think, finished his seagull, and he, uh, oh, the boy finished a black one. They, did, uh, the boy and girl, not that much difference in them, and yet they was never in the same class, school. Hmm. I said, they live in the same house now. You tell me how that, I don't know how they do that stuff. I don't know. Huh. But I hope Tom does good over there, but I hope he don't get washed away. But there's a possibility. Mm. I don't guess the mill will wash them away because it's been through a lot of it. Yeah, that the building is probably around 200 years old. Or 150 years old. Well, let's see. Was there when my daddy was a boy? And my daddy would have been 80, I think he was 78 or 79 on his birthday. And he, he would be 140 years old if he was living. <laughs> really? Wow. So it was there then. This house would be that be that old too. I guess it's been here for years. It's huh? huh. We added on. So what was the original part of the house right here? Well this house got far burn part of it. Oh we, okay. Uh-huh. And I'm scared to death of far. Mm -hmm. We sitting in there and I said we was having a thunderstorm and said pow. And I heard him just ping. I said, how are the houses on fire? He said, it ain't. I said, I smell smoke. My mother always fussed at me because I smelled everything that didn't smell right. <laughs> and I said, I smell smoke. He said, I don't see none. I said, I smell it. I got up and it was coming out of the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And it burned a wire in two that went on the house. Burned it. I said, under that bed, the back room bed, I had two big suitcases packed full of clothes. And that, that held it down, but it burned my mattress and my box springs off the bed, but it never did burn out, you know, all through the house. But the water done more damage than anything. But it kept it from burning up the house. I said, that's one time the old scoot cases was in hands. <laughs> this little boy, my boy and man I'm talking about coming up here. His kids stayed up here and stayed all night me I time every time. And one day he's up here and he said, Mate, what do you got under your bed? <laughs> I said, everybody has something under the bed, don't they? <laughs> he was about five years old. And he said, Mate, what you got under your bed? I said, you don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where I had a suitcase full of towels and and I had some night, uh, I always keep extra gowns. I don't know whether anybody's as stupid as I am, but I always kept a, a suitcase full of gowns and uh, pajamas in case I got sick. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer said, 
Mother got all them gowns and then she'll sleep for one till it falls off of her. I said, that's when they get from feeling good when they get ready to fall off of you. <laughs> they don't wear good when they're new. I don't like nothing new. Usually them old tags hurt your neck on the dresses and everything else. Well, can you think of any more stories of things that um, happened in Reedyville while you were growing up or uh, times when you were at the mill? No, I just went to the mill, and the only thing I know, I was down there, my the old man Sam Hayes aggravated me, and we was all over the mill, and climbing here and there. I said, out on that bluff, we went out on that bluff out behind there. Have you ever been about finding there? Um, no, I don't think so. Behind the mill? I think they had somebody jump off that bluff out there, it seemed like. I guess she's drunk. But, uh, yeah, there used to be a lot of going on down there, but I reckon they don't have nothing going on down there except on Saturday mornings, do they? All I know of right now is the Saturday morning breakfast, but, well, they have a lot of weddings and stuff, I think. Do they have weddings out there on that bluff behind the mill? Is that where I'm telling you talking about? Um, I'm not sure. It is. It's out behind the mill. They have a little gazebo set up mm. and a nice little area. Well, there's a bluff crib uh, hangs over there. Oh, okay. You walk out through there. Oh. Mm-hmm. I don't know how no earthly how to how they got it, how they fix it, but I thought that's where it was at behind the mill. Maybe. Yeah. I don't even know where they put the house up there, the tally house. I don't know how close it is to the bill now. I'm not sure. I know they moved it. Oh, okay. From where it used to be. Tally house used to be up. But I know it's tally bluff and tally house and, and down on there. I've been down there on that where they had to baptize him. And they used to have mussel shells look like uh, oyster shells down there. I just wondered if they have them now. I, I don't know. We went down there and got oyster shells many a time. Uh-huh. But I don't guess I'll ever know. Because <laughs> I ain't go walk down there to see. But we used to be off and up and down the rivers all the time. And then on down below there, They'll call it, go they call it Gucci Ford now, but I always call it Gucci Ford. That's what it was when I was growing up. And that's a swimming hole over there, too. And had a, sw a swing over there. And you know, the, you know, they have this here, comes down Stones River. They come down through here when they come out of down here. Hmm. In the canoes and all. But they used to go to I don't know that I'm thinking places they might not be deep enough for them to take a boat now mm -hmm. since that water is leaking out of the dam. Mm -hmm. Used to water get higher than it does now on account of the dam leaking. But I heard that they's going to fix it, but I don't know whether they are or not. I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of people would like to see it fixed. Um, I don't care whether it does or not. The water don't get as high. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they'd like to fix it. I'm not sure. Um, well, what's he running on? Electricity? Or what? Yeah, electricity. He's not running on water from the race, is he? No. I didn't think he no. was. But if they could fix the uh, stream bank where the water's washed around the dam, then he probably could run on water. Well, I guess the one lives in that house down there would hope it don't fix it either. Because they don't. I hadn't thought about that. I'm not sure. But that, that is deep above that dam. It used to be 14, 15, 16 foot deep. Uh -huh. We used to see in that river all the time. And so the summertime, we lay, we, lay, we laid out there in the river. That's where we done. Uh -huh. There's a big rock over there at the dam that you go over and sit down and lay down out there. And me and another boy used to go down there he they fishing, there's holes right below the dam, and 
we fish in them holes. He'd I stop up one hole and he'd he gra <laughs> what you call grabbling the gravel hole to get the fish out of the hole. Catch some big ones. Oh. Hmm. And now Elmer used to fish here and he'd get fish that long. Wow. They were so good when you'd play them and everything. Mm -hmm. I don't do much cooking no more though. I cook a little. Sometimes, well, I make a lot of bread. I make zucchini bread or a banana bread first one thing or another. Uh Make, I had strawberry shortcake for dinner today. I said, just something, a little something. A lot of times sandwich and sometimes I'll fix a little something. And I don't know whether you know what poke greens are or not. No. Mm -mm. Well, my daughter got out there and picked some the other day, but she brought me some from up yonder. It's to almost tastes almost like spinach, just wild greens. Oh. But a lot of people eat them with eggs, but I don't eat eggs. That's the reason I said I don't need uh -huh. to go nowhere to eat breakfast, because I don't like their breakfast foods. Uh-huh. Uh, well, yeah, thank you so much for sitting down to talk with me. Um, this has been really great. Did you have any other stories about the mill? Anything else? No, I don't go to the mill no more. And I said, <laughs> what I know is this when I was growing up that I'd go over and get ice. And my daddy'd go, uh, he'd go every few days because there was several of us in family, 10 pound, uh, 100 pound of flour didn't do long when you'd make baking and cooking. Oh. Because huh. it's like it is when you buy a little bag now, you don't cook many meals so it's gone. Mm -hmm. You make biscuits? Um, sometimes. Yeah. I said I take some time to make it. You ever make them with uh, mayonnaise? No. <laughs> Is that the best way? Well, you can make some soft and mm. you put a little mayonnaise in with what you uh, mix cooking. Just push your tablespoon full of mayonnaise in it. Mm. I'll have to try that. Um. Before we turn the recorder off, I just want to get your permission on the recorder to donate this interview to the public domain, which is the paper that you signed earlier, mm -hmm. which just means it's available for researchers if someone wanted to research the history of the area or of the mill. So, Well, I got my permission to do anything you want to. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much.